Hello, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I'm here. Uh, you need to hang up so I can do this Zoom. Tell me your number so I can dial you. Uh, 773. Hold on one second. One second. Damn you. Here we go. 773-593-2393. Okay, yeah, I've got you, but I don't have your name locked in. So I'll call you and put yourself on mute. Okay. Go back. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. My name and affiliation. My name is Dr. Randy Short. I am, uh, uh, I guess, a pastor with Salvation and Liberation Temple LLC. I am co-founder of the People's mm -hmm. Report, which is an, uh, a magazine that's in the process of being and podcast that's going to be launched very soon. I am co-founder of the Black American mm -hmm. uh, Constitutional Political Action Committee, among many things that I'm a part of, uh, sir. Yes, absolutely. What, what is the Everything is a problem. And uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, he should be called Anus Brown. Uh, he has no right to speak on behalf of all of the people who are black in San Francisco or anywhere else. The NAACP, which I call the mm -hmm. National Association for the Assassination of Colored People, has been out of order and irrelevant for the most part to black people for 90 years. And I'm quoting um, Joel Spingarn, a Jewish uh, early leader of the National, NAA, National NAACP board. Uh, the NAACP in 1933 at its first and second Amenia conferences um, took a position where they were not going to address fundamental basic economic problems that black Americans face. And 10 years after that, when Du Bois, who had sided with his handlers, decided to talk about economics and the needs of the black community, his overlords, white, threw him out of the NAACP. The NAACP was started by whites, some of them Jewish, uh, with their own idea of what they thought was needed for the black community. Uh, so the NAACP is not really, it has black people in it, like an exploitation film, but it's not under our control. It's a colonial project. It is. It is. It, it has an adversarial, cynical position with our people. And I'm for it being defunded. And since it's nothing but a uh, radical uh, wing of the Democratic Party, it should not have tax exempt status. They should not be seen as a nonpartisan organization, which they obviously have not been for 77 years. Uh, most people don't know anything about the most people don't know anything about the NAACP, Mr. Rosenberg. That's the problem. I can point to my friend that died on October 4th last year. The NAACP turned its back on Medgar Evers and refused to provide protection for him, which made certain that he would end up being killed. The NAACP did nothing to really get to the bottom of its uh, Florida chapter president. He and his wife, Henry and Her Henrietta Moore, were blown up Christmas Day, 1951. The NAACP 
has taken bribes against black causes. The NAACP has some good chapters and there's some good people, but I will say this since we both have some Jewish heritage. Adolf Hitler built the Autobahn and Stadium, and he did some things that you could call good, but ultimately those good things uh, led to great evil. So I can't let someone point out that they've done something great or something now and then, and yet the overall impact is negative. The NAACP has, it's a fraud. The NAACP lies. The NAACP claims on its website that they have 2 million members. Where'd they get 2 million people from? And if they have 2 million members, why does their 2020 annual report claim that they only draw from their membership funds like under $5 million? If you took $5 million out of 2 million members, uh, and yet the annual fee or membership fee is $10 for youth and $30 for adults. Uh, something's not adding up. So it's a dishonest organization. It's an organization that is against the real development of black people, and it helps everybody but us. The NAACP supports the LGBTQ movement, and I'm not against rights for everyone, but uh, rich white gay men have never needed black people's help to get rights. The NAACP supports this illegal migration in the country. When black people are being erased in your state of California, there are thousands of Latinos in jail for terrorizing and many killing black Americans, people unlawfully in the country. The NAACP is an enemy to black people. And so whether you like it or not, and I don't care how people feel about it, those people never meet with the black community because folks would throw bricks and bottles at them. They represent a group of assimilation mad black folks who want to be around other people who are in service of liberal people, uh, Anglos and Jews, maybe they're well-meaning, but ultimately we need results, not well intentions. I could give you a pill thinking it's an aspirin and it's a cyanide capsule you'd be just as dead as if I had meant to kill you and gave you an aspirin. Hold on, I can't hear you for some reason. I can't hear you. I really can't hear you. I can't hear you, and I don't know why. Your voice is so low down, I don't hear you. Uh, no, and I have one problem. My cat apparently wants to go outside. Give me just one moment. Now, you, did you get your sound so I can hear you? Not much. Do, do you want me to get out and call you right back? Would that, would that help? You know, maybe I should leave and come back in. Is that all right? Uh, let me try it. No, let me see if I can come back in. 
Oh, I see what the problem is. No, I don't need to leave. You can leave your video on. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, what happened is this thing went to Wi-Fi. Now I can hear you. I apologize. Okay. All right, so some people uh, see the NAAC as uh, progressive, fighting for the rights of black people. You obviously don't. Some see it as too conservative, uh, you know, even back what, in the days when what do they mean by conservative, sir? And what do they yeah, mean by just progressive? Very, very hesitant to challenge the white power structure compared to, say, uh, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference or the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee or the Black Panther Party or Black Lives Matter, for that matter. Uh, Black Lives Matter and the NAACP are very similar. Um, uh, see... Unfortunately, if you don't know anything about black people, and most white Americans don't, they think they do, they don't really have to. That's part of a racist system where people don't know people in their own country. So this term radical, conservative, progressive, in reality, those things don't necessarily apply to the situation that we face. What black people need is money, land, access to capital, and freedom from racial terrorism, what, no matter what you call it. The NAACP... I guess that's what the movement for reparations is about, right? Well, the rep Yeah, well, it can be, but not necessarily, because there's an issue with reparations, and, not that, and I'm for reparations and for reparative justice, but here's the problem. Reparations needs to be... People need to be educated at what it is that they should want, what they can get, and what they need. Uh, and people like, uh, I'm calling him Anus Brown, instead of being against reparations and trying to hoard it or manage it for a selfish clique of people, is to truly sit down and explain to people and find out what reparations could be. Not just a check. My great uncle, tortured by the Nazis in Germany, didn't get one penny of the GI Bill money. There are hundreds of thousands of blacks who didn't get GI Bill money, and that was allotted to them. When people talk about reparations, they don't talk about that. That's money the government set aside that we never got. There are thousands of There's black people. About it now of giving people a certain amount of money, and I was listening to one of the hearings. California recently, and one of the big issues was land. You know, well, they, they should they should get land, but even with reparations, again, part of the problem is it has to be more than just this quick rush job. Uh, why I'm going to say this is because when we talk about America, and we're using these terms, colonial terms, of what you're saying, black and black is a created term. You, you use it because this unfair system puts people in all these little boxes and certain people are designated as losers and winners and they give these titles. There's been a complete destruction of people's identity. California had black people who you call Indians by the hundreds of thousands that were mass murdered. That's not even being discussed as you're talking about reparations in the state. That's an insult to me. Um, so there's a range of uh, reparations. The discussion right now is, I'm glad it's happening, but it doesn't do the full scale. I mean, part of why land should be discussed is finding out who were the original people in various places. So because this idea that everybody came to America who's, who's not white, on a slave ship from Africa is a farce. I have ancestry that's Indian. They've always been here. And our government knows, and this is a big scam, and the term Indian in America is legal. It's not based on who really is an original person here. So you have a lot of white phonies like Elizabeth Warren who benefit, who get reparations off of Aboriginal Americans, and they're not even one. So when they talk about land, and they make it seem as if they're being magnanimous, well, damn it, it was ours. My folks are P Pamunkey, Blackfoot, Seminole, 
Creek, Powtan, Pamunkey, Piscataway. Um, and we don't get anything right at this moment. We have Nazi Germany style laws called blood quantum. The same thing that the Nazis did to Jews in Germany is how the Bureau of Indian Affairs more or less decides who is and who is not an Indian. And no should one's talking. No, by a, a separate kind of uh, panel? Well, no, no, because it's not separate. I, no, I'm both. What? No, Native Americans are a different category. You don't know who I am or what we are, and yet you're trying to have a conversation. The term Native American is for a different group of people here because you think it's all one thing because you don't know what you're talking about. Most people in America don't know anything about where they live or who's here. As a result, when we have these conversations, they're flawed. There's a wonderful gentleman that you should talk to. His name is Dr. Cl Clyde Winters. We're the Aboriginal people here. The original people in America look like me. These long-haired people that you think only represent what Indians are or more recent people that came to the American continent. And this is a big lie. Everyone's doing it. Um, in Virginia, 1912, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Plecker made people and my family and others went to sleep as a type of Indian and woke up and found out they were black. And that's just it. We had something similar happen in New Orleans where people went to bed as Creoles and woke up the next day as black. Black is actually a category that can be enslaved, exploited, abused, land taken, have no rights. Now, we use the term because we try to describe who is his people. So this reparations thing doesn't even deal with it. Washington, D.C., where I live, belonged to my grandmother's tribe. Uh, they only recently acknowledged that we existed. In other words, so like in South Africa, a repressive society under apartheid, America still has this. So we're talking as if, okay, we've sorted all this stuff out and let's just pay people out. Bullshit. We haven't even really gotten to the bottom of what the problem is. And so I'm happy that they get five million may not be enough money. <laughs> and are they going to have to pay taxes on it and so forth and so forth and so forth? And who's going to protect people? The Osage Indians down in Oklahoma uh, had land and white people married amongst them and killed them all and stole their land. And they did the same thing with people in Hawaii. Who's going to protect black people when they have millions of dollars, but they don't have political and social rights to protect themselves because historically white people of all types have come and stolen from us, murdered us, taken it. And who's going to help? Who wants to deal with the nuclear arm United States over, pardon my language, their niggers? Nobody. What's your solution to this problem? Well, why would I have to have a complete solution, sir? I'm saying to you, I may have, I no, hold it. No, no, I, I, I wouldn't, no one would let me, you're Jewish. I couldn't come and say, what's the solution for Jewish people to you? I mean, it's insulting. Why should I have to have all of the answers? What's more important is to understand or at least have a grasp of the, 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 the scope of the problem, which I'm saying to you, they haven't even looked at everything. How are you going to come up with a solution if you don't even know the full scope and scale like of the problem? Doing the uh, reparations investigations are not doing it hastily. It seems like they're having a series of hearings to get into the details. But the who, 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 who's in the hearings? Do they have lots of academics or these politically appointed people? Are these people that are going to tell the truth? Like Johnny Mathis, who's yeah, yeah, but uh, but no, yeah, uh, look, I'm not saying not to do those. I'm not trashing the hearings, but your most famous black citizen from San Francisco is Johnny Mathis. Johnny Mathis is an Indian, sir. Look at him. Tell me somebody African that looks like Johnny Mathis. That's uh, it, it. Doesn't matter if you get my point. 
That's part of why they have meetings. It's because a lot of people don't know what the issues are. And it's not incumbent on someone to come with all the solutions. It's incumbent on many people to come together to look at what are what in a basket, like a basket currency, to look at many ways or approaches to doing that. Uh, again, I'll use my favorite subject, Jews. They didn't just say let people out of the concentration camps. They didn't say that. There were various things. They get reparations. They get settlement money every year from the United States government, aside from the military support. They get uh, favorite things in terms of trading. They get all kinds of stuff as a reparative thing for Jewish people who suffered under Nazi Germany. They didn't just come up with one thing. They didn't just throw them a check. And it's ongoing. There's going And what they want to do is throw some money and say, there, there, niggers, we gave you. Leave us alone. No, it's more comprehensive than that. We have a country right now here in Washington, D.C. I'm working with people who, in fact, I, I have to deal with this call when I'm finished with you, with it, with people who work for the government in the city of Washington, D.C., who are systematically cheated out of their wages for, 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 for decades. And there's almost no way to correct that. And so if I say to you, the house that I'm in, on the title deed of the house it's not to be sold to black people. I'm living in a house I have no right to live in under the deed. This thing is real deep. It's not simple. Uh, people have had hundreds of years to hurt us and create this. And so it doesn't just get solved with the with the uh, a snap of a finger. It, that's not going to happen. Although they can begin the process. And yes, money helps a whole lot. There are things that they could do, like debt forgiveness and other things. Um, they could do for us what they're doing right now for illegals in this country. They have the Office for New Americans. They do all kinds of services in San Francisco and other places for people who don't even belong in America. We need something across the board. A check is a start. They're people who can't read. I'd say 40% of black men in Washington, D.C. cannot read or are, have problems reading. How are they going to make it in an information-based society, even if you gave them a check? Uh, and so they know how to fix things. What are they doing for people who come into the country unlawfully? If they did some of that for people who built this country, we'd be making some progress. So look at a variety of ways to do that. There should be everything from Spanish classes to you, you name it, um, training doctors, because we have very few black doctors and that's systematic. White society destroyed the black medical schools. White society has played a role in getting rid of hospitals. They've made us unhealthy. So land, nutrition, the pharmaceutical uh, industry that deliberately gives black people drugs that don't work, that are tested to serve whites, but blacks who have biochemical differences get the same drugs that may not be good for them. You have to literally remake this damn country. A check is great, but even more, uh, alongside the checks. They did that for white people. They gave white people 900,000 square miles of land at the expense of killing off significant numbers of Native Americans in Buffalo. And then they put up land-grant colleges, they built railroads, they did all kinds of infrastructure to make certain that white people succeeded. Giving us a check is a start. It's not the complete package. You're welcome.